Okay, when I was going through the Arduino code, this uh, inclinometer came up, and this is kind of always, I never sat down and did the math, but it says it's good for plus and minus 30 degrees, but it isn't. It, uh, it maps 4200 to 960. Not really sure why, but uh, these values are sent. They're 14-bit uh, or 12-bit, depending on the IMU. They're sent as a as a signed integer, and so to, in order to get to the degrees, you would divide it by 16 and divide it by 16 again, or same thing as dividing by 255, which is also the same as 8 bits of shifting over, but then you lose all the decimals. So, I got to thinking that when the, when the IMU is really noisy, then it really shifts the tractor back and forth. And, and again, like I say, that guys just tend to turn it off because sometimes it just doesn't work or if it's not mounted right, that sort of thing. And then I was also thinking, well, maybe it's something that the code was wrong. Now, I got this directly from Coffee Track. I never, I never changed it, never, like I say, never really thought about it. But uh, now I have thought about it. And so all we did was take the, the divide by 16 value, or 16 times the actual degree, and then put it through this Kalman filter. That's multiplying by 0 0.0625 is the same as, as uh, dividing by 16. Uh, here's an integer. Uh, save it as a float. And then run it through our Kalman filter. And then what do we get on the out? What do we get out the other side? Okay, so this is using the Arduino plotter. We have our amplitude on this side and time base along the bottom. And if we have a picture of the board, if I go tap 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 tap, you can see these big spikes happening, and you can see what happens. The red line is that divide by 16 number. Now I have the the column filter actually running pretty fast, as you can see. If I just take and lift the board, you know, it, it reacts quite quickly. You see that little bump there? You know, even if I bang the table, it gets those spikes. And like if I bang, tap the board, sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. There's a good one. But you can see what happens if it's just the right noise, it'll, okay, what is that? It's like 50, so that's about three or four degrees, a little jump to the side, one side and the other side. And of course your steering wheel goes wonka wonka. And so I got to thinking about the idea of a differential term and finite, inf finite impulse response type filters and doing some digital filtering on this as opposed to just doing an average. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, is, uh, is doing some digital filtering techniques. And it's an Arduino, so we can't use an, an IIR filter or an FIR filter, but we can do some tricky differential math. So that's what we're gonna look at. Okay, so what we have here is three, three waveforms, and they're of different frequencies. The pinky one there is the slowest one, and the purple one's the fastest one. And this is on the X scale is, is time. And on the, on the Y scale is, uh, is amplitude. Now what we want to do is every time the Arduino runs through a cycle and it's running at, at 10 hertz. So this is, a, you know, each one of these little gaps is 100 milliseconds or 0 0.1 seconds from there to there. Now, if we take a line, or we start here, and we do one sample, we can see that this pink one goes from here to here. And the black one goes from here to here. And the purple one goes there. Now what we can do is measure the amplitude based on that delta t. Now remember we're integrating over time so this is a distance that's a distance and that's a distance. 
Now the faster and the higher or the greater the amount, you can basically assume that it's a higher frequency and it's going to be a very high amplitude. So by limiting how far that waveform moves from this point to this point, this is our last point and this is our current point, by limiting it to whatever frequency we want to select, like suppose we, we want to include the slow waveform, but we want to limit it to this frequency here. Again, if this is like one second or a half a second, then that becomes our time base. So if this is our level based on our highest desired frequency, we can see that, well, these are divided by 10. So this is 10, there is really no unit, but it's, it's 10 units from there to there. Now, 10 units from here to here will be all the way over there. So we'll include this part, but this waveform, like remember we were wrapping on the, on the IMU and you get these big sharp jumps back and forth. Well, if we start at our time base and we can only go from there to there, all we can do is go from there to there. So that becomes our limiting factor. If we exceed this, then we don't accept this point. We only accept our limit from there to there. Now our second point is from there to there. Now if this spike went up and back down again, by the time it got to there, what would our waveform look like? It would go from there to there, and then scooch across, and then the next reading would be down here somewhere. And remember, this is our big spike. It goes way up and way back down. Our second measurement would be from, from here to here, which again, much exceeds this 10. But where is 10? 10 is there. So now what we've effectively done is instead of this huge spike, what we've done is taken the differential and eliminated that spike. Now, if we keep sampling these guys, no problem, 10, 10, 10, 10. And then this level is uninterrupted. And same with this one, from there to there, that's under 10, under 10, under 10. So you can see that, you know, as long as we stay under this raise, remember it's rise over run, as long as we keep that slope below that 10, then we will follow the waveform exactly. If it exceeds that, then we cut out this big chunk of noise. Now here we have another example of a messed up piece of paper. But you can see, you know, it's the same if we have a frequency that goes like this, or a quick spike, straight up, straight down, that sort of thing. If we only take 10 of it, this becomes our resultant waveform. So we lose all of that influence on the Kalman filter, and we effectively erase it. So now that becomes our disturbance. So that's all we're trying to do, is just get rid of all of this area under this curve and this curve, and shrinkify it. All right, so how do we do that in code? Okay, back into our Arduino code again. We have our plus and minus 4200. That's our max going up and down. And now we'll uncomment this. And what this does is we determine a difference between what our current reading is, what this roll is coming out of our IMU, and what the last roll was. So that's one time step back. Now, if that's greater than 100, right on our little example, we used, we used 10, but because we're going from zero to 4,200, we use bigger numbers. Uh, so we're gonna use 100. And if the difference is greater than 100, well, then we know that we're going positive. So now our roll is our last point plus 100. Or if it's not, then it's just whatever the roll is. Remember, that's like the pink one and the black one. We just accept what the new value is, 
and we just dump our current role into our last role for the next cycle. If it's negative, this, if the difference is negative, that means it's going downward or it's in the negative territory. So we subtract 100 from that so that we can follow the waveform, not the entire spike of the waveform, but we just follow that uh, up and down. Plus 100, minus 100. Okay, and then we, this is, remember this is an integer and we can't easily divide integers and we can't use bit shift because then we lose the bits. So we just put that into roll K, which is a float, you know, an integer into a float, multiply that by 0 0.0625. Then we put it through the Kalman filter and the Kalman filter is much sped up from before. And then let's see what it looks like. And so we'll upload this. So here we are back in the plotter. This is in the Arduino IDE. And this is with our modified version. And uh, it's all pretty quiet like before. And you can see the, the noise kind of goes from three to four. But then remember, we have to divide this by 16 in order to get the actual degrees. So now let's rat a tat tat on the board. You can see the red line follows it along. It's very quick. But now when we do it, you can see that there isn't much difference. You see that it eliminates following that noise. It just doesn't, because what we've done is we've limited that. So when we go up and down, remember the red one is our actual line. So even though the signal is noisy, it follows very quickly. I'm just lifting up board and just dropping it. Even just dropping the thing, there's a little bit of noise but not bad. So this is a dramatic improvement, I think, for the, uh, for the MMA. It should really, really work well on the dogs. So uh, yeah, a little bit of an improvement. Took a little bit to figure it out and how to code it, but I think it was really time, time well spent. So it's a very, uh, how do you say it, a very simple math problem to a complex digital filter. And is for the amount of code and the amount of processing it has to do with just by subtracting 100 or adding 100, it uh, is extremely efficient. All right, thanks.